Hi developers, I'm Hussam Delai, Microsoft Most Valuable Professional. In this video, I'll give you a short introduction on how Kubernetes works. The main objective behind Kubernetes is to run and orchestrate containers. Those containers could be Docker containers, Creo, Container D, or any other type of container. Kubernetes will run those containers inside virtual machines or physical servers. So at the bottom architecture of a Kubernetes, we have actually a cluster, a cluster composed of multiple VMs or physical servers. So let's start drawing the architecture of Kubernetes right here. So we say we have multiple virtual machines or physical servers. Those are called nodes and the um, Kubernetes um, jungle. So this one will be called node number two, for example. We said this could be a VM or a physical server. And it is a cluster, so we'll have multiple, um, multiple nodes running inside our cluster. Here we'll have the node number two, for example, and I'll add a node number uh, three. In each of those nodes, we want to run the containers. For Docker containers, for example, we need to have the container runtime installed in each of those nodes. So here, one of the components that should be available is the, no, is the container runtime. So let's draw that here. Container runtime. So this should be installed in all the nodes. Now with this architecture, I can actually access to any of those nodes and run a container from here. I can run the command docker run and this will deploy a container on one of those nodes. But maybe if I'm, I access the node number two, maybe I don't still have enough memory and CPU in order to run that container. So that's one pain point. Another one is that I don't want to access my node directly. If, if I have here a cluster that is composed of 100 nodes, I don't want to access all of those nodes in order to run and, and deploy my different uh, 200 containers, for example. So here, where we'll have another layer added by Kubernetes. This will facilitate the deployment and running of those different containers. We'll talk to this component in order to deploy our different co uh, containers. And this one is called the uh, master or the controller plane. So on top of those nodes or those virtual machines, we'll have another component. That's the um, controller plane. So let's draw that here. So this is going to be the control plane. And this is the, actually the brain of Kubernetes. Here where we have all the main Kubernetes uh, components, they will be installed here. The role of the control plane is to control which container will run on my different nodes. So this will control my different nodes. So it, it knows where are my nodes and it will issue commands in order to deploy different uh, containers inside those nodes. But how the control plane works? So here inside uh, the control plane, I'll have my developer who will be using kubectl in order to issue commands to the control plane to tell that I, I want to uh, deploy uh, five containers, for example. And then the control plane will take that um, will take on control over there to deploy the five containers on those three nodes. It will choose uh, on which node to install uh, which container. So let's say here I'll have my uh, developer from here. And my developer will be using kubectl 
to interact with my Kubernetes cluster. So let's draw here. kubectl is the CLI or the command line interface that will be used by my developer in order to issue requests to the control plane. So this uh, using kubectl will, um, will send configuration files or the YAML manifest files. Those are, as I said, those are YAML files that contains the configuration for uh, the application. This contains, for example, the name of the container that I want to run, the number of the or the replica of those containers, the different uh, ports that, that should be uh, open at, at containers, the configuration of the services to use load balancer, for example, or to use node ports, and the uh, connection between the, the different uh, components. So this YAML file will be sent to the control plane through the kubectl. Here we'll be using the command kubectl apply minus f, the name of our configuration YAML file. So this YAML file will arrive here to the control plane and inside the control plane we'll have different uh, components that will handle the developer uh, request. So first of all here we'll have the kubelet API or the API server, call it. The API server is the component that will um, get that request. Then it will save the configuration for the cluster inside another component called it etcd. etcd is the uh, store where we have the configuration for the cluster. This contains, for example, which are, from here we can know which are the uh, containers that runs inside my cluster, which is, and which is the configuration of those different uh, containers. Then from this um, API server, we'll read this YAML file. It will read that here, for example, my developer wants to run uh, my five containers. So then it will talk to another component, which is the scheduler. So we'll have here the scheduler and also the controller manager. Those two will help to deploy the containers into my different nodes. So they will see the configuration for my nodes. They will see where I have enough CPU and memory in order to deploy the five containers. And then it will say, for example, in the, first, uh, in the node number one, I'll go to deploy maybe uh, one container. So here it will go to uh, deploy that container. But here, the way it will deploy the container is not uh, is actually by talking to another component of Kubernetes, which is the kubelet. So here, inside this uh, node, it will need to uh, use the kubelet. So the kubelet actually will get the request from issued by the scheduler and the controller manager and it will read that um, command and then it will um, start the container inside this uh, node. So from here, for example, it will run container, maybe container one and also maybe container two. It will run two containers in this uh, node and maybe another one container here and two on the node number three. So in each node, we'll have also a kubelet. The same goes here and the same for node three. So the kubelet is like the client side for the Kubernetes uh, control plane uh, installed inside our uh, nodes. So here we run another container. Let's say this is going to be the container number three will we'll, we'll run here and container four and container five will run inside the node three, uh, three. Container four and container five.
So it will see the available CPU and memory and then it will deploy the containers depending on those uh, different uh, factors. Then if I have, for example, a node 2 that will crash, for example, then I will not have in this entire node. This means the container number 3 will also crash. And in this case, because Kubernetes uses what we call the DSC, the desired state configuration. So Kubernetes will always read the configuration or the desired state that uh, we want the developer wants. Here, for example, he wants to run five containers. Then at each instance, at each instant, the Kubernetes cluster should be running five containers. And if one of those containers go down, it crashes, then Kubernetes will try to reschedule this crashed container inside the other available nodes. It will start by seeing the node number one if it does have enough um, resources to run that container right here. If it does, it will run it here. If it doesn't, then it will go to look for the other available uh, nodes. This means we will look for uh, node number three, for example. If it does it have enough resources, then it will go to run that container uh, number three in this uh, node. In this case, it will go to run it here. This way, Kubernetes will make sure that all my containers are always up and running. Now what about my users who want to access the application installed in this cluster? Here we saw that the developer go through the uh, control plane, but my users actually want to access the application that is installed inside those nodes. So they don't need to access the app through the control plane, but they need to access it through uh, directly through those nodes. And here, let's draw those uh, users here, let's say I'm going to have my users with S, multiple users. And then those uh, users want to access my app. But here, instead of accessing directly the to the containers, they will go through something like a load balancer, for example, because here I, m I might have multiple instances of my application. and Will they go to the container number four or container one or two or five? It's the uh, load balancer that will uh, decide. So here, let's draw this uh, load balancer. So the role of the load balancer here is to, um, to distribute the traffic or the requests to the different um, containers that I have. So maybe first request will go here, the second one maybe it will go here, and the third uh, request will go right here. And something like the load balancer, for example, uh, might not uh, be as p a part of my Kubernetes uh, cluster, because we don't have something like, call it load balancer inside the um, our uh, cluster, but this resource could be provisioned by the cloud that hosts my cluster. We know that Kubernetes uh, could run on-premise, or it could also run as a managed server, a managed service inside the cloud provider. It could run, for example, on Azure using the AKS service, Azure Kubernetes service, or it could run also on uh, Google using Google Kubernetes engine or an Amazon using Elastic Kubernetes service. And those uh, different cloud providers, Amazon, Google Cloud, and um, Amazon uh, AWS, all of them, they have um, other managed services that could be used by the Kubernetes cluster, like the load balancer, for example, and also like the managed disks. So, if I have, if I'm using databases for my app or I want to uh, store files, then maybe I want to use the managed disk, which offers um, high availability, high SLA and backup and so on. And those managed disks could be provisioned by the Kubernetes cluster here using another component in Kubernetes, which is the cloud manager. So let's draw that here.
the cloud manager API component will talk to the uh, cloud the different cloud providers and it will ask them to provision a managed disk for example or load balancer or any other component that we want to uh, provision and to attach to the uh, cluster. I hope this gives you a clear explanation on how Kubernetes works. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to follow me on Twitter on my handler at Hussam Delay. Thank you.